Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question for you related to the metabolic and endocrine system interventions. So before we get to that, just a quick reminder though, if you haven't yet, be sure to go over to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast to sign up for all of our freebies. We've got a couple of free things we're giving away right now, a regenerative medicine course. We've got a free on-site on campus day for you, plus our full premium content. You have to sign up and register. If you'd like that, sign up and apply. Remember those spots are extremely limited, so you'll want to make sure to do all that before the end of January as we are recording this. All right, so today's question is related to the metabolic and endocrine system. So on test day, you can expect somewhere between four and six questions related to the metabolic and endocrine system. Today is about interventions. We'll talk about that as we go through the FSBPT's content outline for 2024 and beyond. Plus, you can always check out ptfinalexam.com for all of our courses, all the content we have to help you across this exam. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into our, our practice question for today. So as per our usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we will talk about it together. When treating patients with obesity, which of the following potential complications is most likely to occur? When treating patients with obesity, which of the following potential complications is most likely to occur? We've got one, excessive decrease in blood pressure, two, hyperhydration and excessive blood volume, three, increased caloric energy expenditure, and four, precipitation of angina pectoris. So when treating patients with obesity, which of the following potential complications is most likely to occur? One, excessive decrease in blood pressure. Two, hyperhydration and excessive blood volume. Three, increased caloric energy expenditure. And four, precipitation of angina pectoris. So the correct answer here is that fourth option, precipitation of angina pectoris. As you consider the implications of, of obesity, it is likely that they will have cardiovascular deficits. So it, there's a multitude of signs and symptoms that would go with this. But generally speaking, the decreased tolerance of aerobic activity would lead to myocardial ischemia and potentially the precipitation of angina pectoris. So that's the most likely potential complication to occur of the ones listed here. Other complications would include excessive rises in blood pressure. So that would be like an excessive sympathetic nervous system response aggravation of degenerative type arthritis, uh, injuries, really any type of injury, but especially heat-related injuries, just because adipose tissue acts as a great insulator, so heat-related injuries would be high on the list, excessive sweating, hypohydration, and hypovolemia, all of these are likely to occur, or potential complications, to exercise or intervention with someone with obesity. So looking at these other incorrect answer options, the first incorrect one is excessive decrease in blood pressure. Rather, it should read an excessive increase in blood pressure. And again, that's the sympathetic nervous system that is the, essentially the stress that the patient is undergoing will be more profound and pronounced, resulting in the likelihood of excessive increased blood pressure. Uh, the other, in, other incorrect answer options include hyperhydration and excessive blood volume, where it's actually the opposite. You have excessive, uh, excessive sweating which can, relieve, can lead to hypohydration and a decrease or drop in blood volume, so hypovolemia, likely due to that fluid loss due to excessive sweating. Again, considering the heat-related injuries here, heat stroke, uh, they, they are likely to sweat excessively, which will lead to hypohydration. So when you consider uh, working with patients with obesity, you need to be quite, I guess, just quite cognizant of adequate hydration status. And finally, the last, the last incorrect answer option, increased caloric energy expenditure. So this is true. And actually, this is not a complication. Rather, this is the target of exercise with patients with obesity, that increasing caloric energy expenditure, even as little as say three minutes a day, can have significant beneficial effects for these patients. And so therefore, the target benefit of exercise is to increase caloric energy expenditure. Again, we're talking about treating patients with obesity. This is one of your targets of exercise intervention would be to increase caloric energy expenditure. 
So again, the correct answer here was precipitation of angina pectoris. This is one of the potential complications just because of the cardiovascular demand, meaning that the demand of the heart tissue is exceeding the supply of oxygen that the cardiovascular system can deliver, therefore resulting in angina pectoris or the chest pain associated with exercise and obesity. So there you go. There is the, uh, the question about the metabolic and endocrine system. Again, the, the resource on this was Goodman's pathology and implications for PTs. And the key here is that, uh, again, uh, it's almost, it's interesting how when you get excess adipose tissue, it begins to act as its own organ. And so in that case, it can actually exacerbate pain, low back pain, joint pain. There's, there's a lot of complicating factors here. And so therefore, when you are performing exercise intervention, you need to be cognizant of the of these complications that can arise as a result of the obesity. And so all that to say that uh, these patients require just, I guess we'll, we'll call it just, you want to make sure that you're watching for these yellow flags to make sure that you're not pushing too far. And again, the precipitation of angina pectoris would be high on the list of potential complications when exercising with a patient with obesity. So there you go. There's the practice question related to the metabolic and endocrine systems. Uh, be sure to check out all the other, all of the other episodes we've got over here on the NPT podcast. And if you haven't yet, be sure to leave us a five-star review. It really helps. We're trying to get the word out about the podcast. It only takes a moment on Google Play, Apple iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is you're listening to this podcast. In the meantime, though, stay safe out there. Happy studying. We'll crane fist pumps all around, and I'll catch you all in the next episode. Thanks. 